Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-karim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. The one God, the only God, besides whom there is no other God. Our God and their God as well. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers, on our father, Adam. We recognize him as father and so do they. Our father, Abraham, we recognize him as father and so do they. On Moses, and we believe in Moses and so do they. And on David and on Solomon, and we believe in them and so do they and on Jesus, and on his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Maryam. And we believe in him as the Messiah, and so do our Christian brothers and sisters. But the Jews don't, they reject him. And on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon them all. As we greet you, on this, the tenth day of the month of Rabi Uthani, of the year 1445, from my Caribbean island of Trinidad, with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, wherever you are in the world, and modern technology allows us to reach you so many parts of the world. And we address you today on a fascinating topic. What does the Quran say about the fate which awaits the state of Israel and those who control power in the state of Israel and those who support those who control power? So the title is the Quran and the fate of Israel. And uh, we recognize today that there is a, an amazing similarity between what occurred so many moons ago and what is now happening at this time. Many, many, many moons ago, there was an oppressor in the land of Egypt. His name was Pharaoh, and he oppressed the Israelite peoples, and they were enslaved. They were slaves in the land of Egypt. And that oppressor was powerful, and the Israelite people were weak. That oppressor was arrogant believed that he was invincible and he was relentless in his oppression and the signs of the Lord God came at that time as they're coming today as well but the oppressor was blind and the same thing is happening now in the Holy Land History is repeating itself, and the Quran has directed attention to this subject. What was the fate that Pharaoh met? And what is the fate which awaits today's oppressor? That is our subject today. And our viewing audience will be fascinated by what is in the Quran. The e Egyptian army, Pharaoh's army, pursued Moses and the Israelite people as they fled to the Red Sea. They were traveling on horse carts and donkey carts and so on. 
And there were about maybe 600 people, men, women, children, and so on, all of them fleeing from Pharaoh and his oppression. It would be wonderful if one day we could see that video of the Israelite people fleeing from Egypt. And when they reached to the Red Sea, they felt that now we are lost, we are cornered. We are between the devil and the deep blue sea. There is no hope. But then Allah spoke to Moses. Nabi Musa alayhi salam. The Lord God intervened in history. And he said, strike the water with your staff. And when he struck the water, the Red Sea, the sea parted miraculously. And there was a mountain of water on this side and a mountain of water on that side. But in between there was dry land. And the Israelite people were able to cross on the bottom of the sea were able to cross over to Sinai. But when Pharaoh and his army reached the bank, the river, the, the bank of the sea, and they attempted to cross, then the Lord God caused the mountain of water on both sides to come down upon them, and they were all drowned. And when Pharaoh was drowning, Pharaoh realized that he is not God. And the real God is the God of Moses and the people of Moses, the Israelite people. And so something happened underneath the water. And no one knew about it, not even <laughs> the Security Council of the United Nations. No one knew what happened underneath the water, no one, until the Quran was revealed. Absolute truth in the Quran explains all things. And absolute truth in the Quran told us of what happened underneath the water. Pharaoh declared that I now believe in the God of Moses and the Israelite people. And then Allah replied, and these were his words. Our Arab, our Arab listening audience, they don't need a translation. They understand the words of the Lord God in the language it was sent down. Al-An, he said, now Pharaoh, at this time, now you declare your faith? Waqad asayta qabr, and before this you were in arrogant rejection? Waqunta min al-mufsideen, and you were committing oppression in the land, facade, that which corrupts to the extension that it destroys. As today, the arrogant state of Israel is planning now, after bombarding with missiles, Gaza, the biggest open-air concentration camp in the world, which has been crying and crying and crying for so long, so many decades, and when the Secretary General of the United Nations organization points to that, that these people have been suffering for so long, you get angry with him, huh? and you refuse to offer any visas to the United Nations people coming to Gaza, well, this is arrogance. And you will pay a price for your arrogance. So Allah says, 
were kundamin al mufsidin and you were committing oppression in the land you were committing fasad falyawma nunajjika bi badanik falyawma nunajjika bi badanik this day fero we have ordained that we will preserve your physical body have you ever been to the museum of cairo <laughs> and seen the body there <laughs> yes i went to cairo i was a student in the 1963 64 years of age still a green banana and i went to the i went to the museum and i saw the body preserved So Allah says for yawman unajik bi badnik This day we have been ordained that we are going to preserve your physical body litakuna so that when your physical body resurfaces in history when it is discovered litakuna liman khalfaka aya that this body of yours will be a sign from me for a people to come after you wa inna kathira min an-nas an ayatin la ghafil but most people are negligent they don't bother about the signs of the lord god they heedless of the signs of the lord god but not today when people are waking up and we are making a humble effort to help them to wake up so then was the body of pharaoh discovered yes it was it was discovered in 1897 And at the very time that body was discovered something else happened in the world which uh, has escaped the attention of some people not all that in the city of Basel in Switzerland the Zionist movement was formally established at the time when the body of Pharaoh was discovered these two things happen together it's a sign from the lord god and we bring that to you today to remind you at this time when blood and tears are flowing so now the question is what is the sign we are preserving your body so that when it resurfaces in history when it is discovered it will function as a sign for a people to come after you and we ask the question what is the sign we have written on this subject and lectured on this subject for the last 25 years we have written it in this in our first book on islamic eschatology which today becomes a textbook on islamic eschatology jerusalem in the quran and uh, uh, the, we are reminding you to read that book you don't have to buy it you can download it at free of charge from my website all my books can be downloaded free of charge from my website and you see the website at the bottom of the screen but in the one of the last books that i have written was entitled the messiah the quran and akhiru zaman akhiru zaman is arabic and i put it in the title because i want the arabic term to return to history to our contemporary history akhiru zaman means the end time so the messiah 
a look on and the end time and you'll find uh, the cover um, the picture of the cover inshallah on this video we we'll put it in and in my books as well as, well as in my lectures these last 25 years I have offered an explanation, a possible explanation of what is the sign. And when we offer an interpretation, we say Allah knows best. Because only Allah can confirm. But if it is the truth, then it will survive. Truth will survive. <laughs> and if I make a mistake, as I have made mistakes, uh, only my critics don't make <laughs> don't make mistakes. I make mistakes, and if I make a mistake, we still get blessings for having made an effort to interpret the Quran. But if I make a mistake tomorrow, it will be gone down the river of no return. And this is my interpretation. Uh, my own teacher of blessed memory, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari, he spoke on this subject, and this is what he said. He says, this was a divine prophecy that the body of Pharaoh will be preserved, and one day it will be discovered. And since it has now been discovered, this is evidence of truth in the Quran. For stuff. And what he said was correct. But I have said something more than that. From the perspective of Islamic eschatology, I have said this is a sign from Allah to a people who will come after Pharaoh, who will live the way Pharaoh lived, and who will die the way Pharaoh died. <laughs> This is my interpretation. How did Pharaoh die? He was stamping his feet, his bloody feet, on the earth. He was oppressing the people, relentless oppression. And when he was about to move in for the kill and finish them off, as Israel wants to finish off the Gaza, throw them out of Gaza, throw them into Sinai, throw them anywhere they can, finish off the Gaza people, the Muslims and the Christians of Gaza. Similarly, Pharaoh was about to finish off the Israelite people. And at the last moment, when it appeared that there was no hope less left, then Allah intervened and they were saved and Pharaoh was destroyed and history will repeat itself this is the fate which awaits you Israel that at the last moment when you have oppressed and oppressed and oppressed we know that this is not the end that there's more oppression to come because our prophet spoke as only a prophet could speak and he said that oppression will reach such an intensity that a man will pass by a grave i think he was talking about gaza and he will say i wish i were in the grave i was in the grave he wrote on the grave. He would roll on the grave. He would roll on the grave. And he say, I wish I were in the grave rather than the dead man. There are those of you in Israel whose hearts still have some compassion in them. You are not a people who have hearts of peace. But there are others who are like that. And so I pray that my words might reach you and you might flee from Israel. Get out of Israel before that time comes when oppression is going to end and the Lord God is going to intervene one more time and history will repeat itself. 
exactly as it happened there on the banks of the Red Sea. And Allah intervened and he said, strike the water with your rod, with your staff. And the miracle occurred. And on this occasion, read my book, The Messiah, the Quran, and the end time. And you see what our prophet has said about that last moment when it, an Israeli army is poised to finish off the job. And then Allah intervenes one more time. And a miracle occurs. And the Messiah is outside their Messiah, we call him al Masih al Dajjal, Dajjal, the false Messiah. And our brothers and sisters who are Christians, I speak, of course, of Christians who follow Jesus. I'm not talking about Christians who follow Santa Claus. They call him the Antichrist. It's the same person. The Antichrist, or Dajjal, leading an Israeli army, is about to finish off the matter. And then Allah sends back the Messiah, Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary. And that Israel is going to be the end of Israel. Let me speak, say one more thing and leave you with your appetite. What else did the prophet say? This man must indeed be a prophet of the one God. We want to know what is the story of how this will end. Read my book, The Messiah, the Quran, and the End Time. He said about the Messiah, the true Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, when he comes back. He says, anyone within the span where his sight can see him, within that span, anyone who is a disbeliever, and the Messiah looks at him, that man will perish and die. So you can amass all the weapons you want. You're not powerful. You're not more powerful than the Lord God of Abraham, alayhi salam. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.